listening to The Hat Rack, the newest TF2 podcast on the block, starring Fede, Prometheus, and Linksicle, sponsored by Manco, Reliable Excavation and Demolition, and the Builders League United. This is Episode 1, recorded Sunday, November 14, 2010. Alright, this is Fadahe, and welcome to the Pat Rack. This is a new Team Fortress 2 podcast, and I hope you enjoy it. Uh, first of all, I'm going to introduce my co-hosts, Brometheus, why don't you go first? Hello, I'm Brometheus. I play Pyro mostly, and a little bit of Soldier. Well, uh, I'm personally the console player of the group, as uh, I actually started off on the Orange Box version of TF2, but... Uh, Around the engineer update, I moved over to PC, and now I play some Scout and Spy. How about you, Linksickle? Uh, I'm Linksickle. I've been playing TF2 since you could uh, pre-order the orange box and uh, get into the uh, game early. I usually play uh, Pyro, Engineer, occasionally Soldier, and I usually alert Payload Service. Alright, so... Uh... Since nothing's really happened recently in the TF2 community, as far as I can tell, uh, why don't we just t- talk about some of the more recent updates? For example, the uh, Man Economy update. What'd you guys think about that? I personally thought it was not as bad as everybody made it out to be. I mean, sure, it became a cash shop thing, but it doesn't actually change stuff. TF2 will be turning three years old on the 22nd, so you have to think about, you know, they've been giving out all these free updates for three years, so it, it, it was kind of obvious that after a while, something like this would happen, because, I mean, you can only get sales from free weekends for so long. Uh, I thought it was okay, but uh, probably uh, just really just a really huge jump, and I don't think people were really expecting it. I mean, the crates didn't help either. Oh my god, I was just about to bring that up. I mean, you could... If they didn't randomly drop, that'd be fine, but if they're just a certain amount of crates that you automatically had, no drops or anything, and then you had to buy the keys, or if the keys were just like a really rare drop like hats, that'd be fine with me. But the current system where it's just like a fake drop, and then you have to buy the keys and or trade them, which is just ludicrous. Like, I got one guy trade, wanting to trade three hats for a key, and that's just ridiculous. People are pretty desperate for that sort of stuff. I think the things that killed it for me were the crates and the fact that they had the set bonuses. It wasn't just hats that you could buy, but you could also buy the regular items and you'd also get a set bonus. So essentially you are paying for um, uh, increased stats in the game, even if there are as minuscule as, you know, 3% movement speed bonus or whatever. Well, actually you have to think with that, because the sniper update, it doesn't really go together, and a lot of the sets are just really counterintuitive. Like like I said, the sniper update, you get the bushwhacker that needs the Jurati, but you can't use Jurati. I mean, you do have the sniper rifle, but that's not going to work. Though the scout one is pretty stupid, powerful. Now, uh, I actually have the scout one, and I didn't even have to buy a single thing. I got the weapons through drops, and then I traded a few hats for the uh, milkman set- hat, and uh, I have to say, it's actually pretty OP, which I probably wouldn't have said of almost anything out of TF2. Yeah, the only thing I've gotten well, yeah. is um, the the Holy Mackerel, which adds absolutely nothing other than the fact that you can wiggle a fish around and kill people with it, and uh, the soldiers... It's basically just a knife and counter-strike. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, and, you know, all the items that I actually do want, I haven't gotten. I've just gotten a lot of crates. See, and I think that's why they added the trading, so that if you... If you see the crap load of items, but you can't get them, then at least you can trade for some other crap, you know? Well, trading was a long time coming. As soon as they made hats and all these different items that were, like, individual, it was bound to happen sooner or later. Oh, that's... Now, uh, honestly surprised that they didn't put in the new map or game mode with the poly count update that they mentioned in the PC Gamer interview. I'm wondering if that was the, uh, the... The boss? Scream Fortress, yeah. I wonder if that was what they were working on, and they just... 
or saving it for that. Because, I mean, they program the I entire hope... boss into the game, you know? I mean, that's a nice little side thing, but I really hope that isn't just the whole game mode. I mean, it's just basically a standard CP map, except with an extra side diversion. Yeah, I thought it was fun at least for the first couple times. Then it got kind of annoying after you got all the medals and hats and everything. Then you're just like, play Mountain Lab, and there's no other reason to play the whole Halloween thing again. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Especially when they had the uh, spectator glitch back when the Screen Fortress update first released. Did you guys hear about that one? Yeah. Oh yeah, we could just run into it. But I came like a day later, so I didn't do that. But heard of people were getting the hats like just like that and causing a lot of rage. Well, I, there are also people who would go into servers and go uh, scout or spy for the sole purpose of getting the gifts. They wouldn't even participate in the capture or anything, and I, I've never actually seen or been able to prove this, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if people had a wall hacks for the gift, where essentially they can see the model through the walls. Oh, They're yeah, I'm sure that happened. Yeah, that would that'd be probably even more notorious on the non-VAC secured servers, I'm sure. Well, wall hacks, it doesn't, VAC doesn't matter when it comes to wall hacks anyway. It was just texture stuff. Actually, I think if you do do wall hacks, the VAT can detect it, can't it? If you have one, like an actual wall hacking bot that will automatically target people, then yeah, I could catch you, but just textures, no. Oh, oh. Alright. Well then, disregard that, I like hacking. <laughs> well, but also, like in some servers, you just see, like, when the hats or the gift spawns, everybody just drops everything and runs to find the gift. Which is amazing if you're trying to get cap points for whatever achievements or anything, because there's nobody guarding the points and you just win the game. That I actually was on one server where uh, the gift spawned, and there were uh, two engineers and a medic heavy combo, and they all built and were defending the gift, and it took a good two minutes for everyone to get oh through the bags and get to the gift. It was pretty <laughs> damn funny. That is pretty amazing, I'm not going to lie. That should be the new game mode. Defend the gift. And if they catch their the gift, then everyone on the team, enemy team gets a free hat. Well, that's just yes, one please. flag, uh, capture the flag, basically. Well, except it's, uh, you're trying to get one object, you don't have to run it back to your base, then it's randomly spawning. That would actually be pretty interesting for a game mode, where you have to defend a certain area that's random. So you could end up getting this really unlucky and getting this spot in the middle of nowhere, or you could get it in this little corner that's really hard to get to, so it would at least be a dynamic game mode. Sure, people that like usually cry about random stuff wouldn't like that a lot, because you know it just brings a whole other level of unpredictability that a lot of people don't like. Now, see, I think they could just kind of balance that by just not putting the uh, spawns right by the enemy's base, like sort of have a middle ground for it, but just sort of spread them out, but not. Someone's in this idea to Valve right now. Gotta get on this. Someone get an email open to Gaben right now. Let me think. Uh, you guys heard about the polycount item creators getting like 23,000 or something, right? Heard it was 45,000. Um, it was from 39 to 47,000 in US dollars, I believe. Oh, wow, really? I thought it was like 25. Yeah. Well, I guess it does. Try out reward them some of it exceeded like the maximum amount paypal will let you send to a person so they actually uh flew them out to seattle to the valve studios to give them the rest of the money yeah oh wow that's insane i mean i don't know if they even expected that i was thinking about they get like a couple thousand at least but like that just yeah, and all they did was just, I mean, just think about the guy who made the damn milk jug uh, for the scout. I oh, doubt that's really that complicated of a model. Yeah. I will admit, though, that the Holy Mackerel's uh interesting model. It actually reminds me there used to be a scout bat replacement that was uh, essentially a horse cock. Oh, God. Don't even remind me about that. <laughs> Wait, I, was this before me or something, or, like, is that just really obscure, or did I just zone that out from no. my mind? 
I think you just uh, said no, it was on FPS Banana it. way, way, way back when. Like we're talking before any of the class updates, I believe it was there. It's I guess if you're in that sort remember, of stuff. I don't remember if it wiggled though. I don't remember if it wiggled like the holy mackerel though, but it was there. No, it had jiggle bones. Oh, that's fantastic. I know, right? Okay, and now I have to go on FPS Banana to see if there's a replacement for it for the holy mackerel. Oh god. I wouldn't doubt it. You know, the internet, that's just crazy stuff. Oh, internet, you so crazy. But, um, any of you guys got a Poker Night at the Inventory yet? No, I don't see the point in it really, because it's just a single player game. And you're just getting a hat out of it. I don't know. It seems like an alright idea, but, like, knowing some of the other things, I don't think it's really going to be worth it. Especially if you're just buying it for a hat. That's just silly. See, I didn't even think that. Well, actually, it's more than a hat. You, there's a uh, hat for the heavy. There's a, I think, a Sasha replacement. Glasses and stuff. Uh, default and... pistol replacement. I think there's actually uh, glasses six items and a spy watch. Yeah, the Luger morph. I remember there's just specific rage for it because it was just one of the most valuable items in the TF2 community. But now that it's getting re-released, everyone is just going insane over it. It's like the Sam and Max hat. You could find people buying like it for six plus hats. I'm just insane. I actually saw someone trying to trade it for five unusual. I want to doubt it to someone bit. There's some pretty stupid people in the trading. No offense to people that are do those type of trades, but some people certainly value stuff. Yeah, but uh, how do you guys feel about the unusual hats? Uh, I feel I think they're pretty interesting, but. They seem to have way too much of an effect. Not quite an effect, actually, but... People just, like, usually just go crazy whenever someone goes into the game with the unusual on. Like, you see the entire enemy yeah, team is focusing on that one person. And then, I don't know. I think it's just one of the things, like, buy our keys. Because that's the incentive. <laughs> if it wasn't for that, people wouldn't be buying them. Alright, guys. So this Wait, is oh, my from... God, it's a hat with flies on. Are they available from the store, or are they random drops? Um, I think they're actually... You get them from crates. Oh, so they're available from the store. Lovely. I don't know. I, Basically. I, they're purely cosmetic, so I guess it's fine. I'd feel kind of uh, bad if like you bought it and you got a sniper hat, and then all of a sudden it's like this giant flaming ball of plasma, and then, oh, look, everyone knows where you're hiding now, or... You know, it'd be useful if you're playing a soldier or a heavy, a target where you want to have a lot of attention directed to versus having it on a medic or maybe a scout trying to cap a point, which is kind of nice. But, uh, yeah, I wouldn't mind finding one, to be honest. You know, I never actually thought about it that way. I'm sure there's no actual strategy to using it, just like a little after effect with the bragging rights, really. I guess a little extra, I guess you'd call it metagame, just a bit more playing with player psychology. I wouldn't be surprised if that's actually the intention Valve might have had with certain effects, trying to make, you know, some make a player more noticeable and, you know, checking that out. Like, they might actually use that later on for designing weapons, assuming they don't just let the community do it from now on, with maybe focusing on giving heavy items that make him more, you know, noticeable and pop out, whereas the spy would probably get some more drab-looking thing, so he blends in with the background, so to speak. Oh. Yeah. I'm just waiting for them to do full-fledged costumes. Like, it's inevitable, <laughs> really. Yeah. Female models. That's what I'm waiting for. Well, you already saw the ones that uh, one FPS banana person did. Like, the really good ones. Though the voice isn't too good. Yeah, I've seen those. Yeah.